the mystery cardinal who goes by the name Deimos, who was very critical of Pope Francis last year. His identity has been revealed today, and it's none other than Cardinal Pell, who has recently passed away and has also published an article that is deeply critical of Pope Francis and calling the Vatican a place of, of a toxic atmosphere. And in this document that came out previously, he referred to the Vatican and the pontificate of Pope Francis as a catastrophe. Yesterday, we talked about the aging Pope Benedict and how he was betrayed by his butler, who you see there on the screen, leaking documents, which led to his resignation in 2013, the announcement of which was met with a lightning bolt that struck the Vatican that very same night. And then we saw Pope Francis elected by the San Gallen Mafia. There on the screen, you see Cardinal De Niels, who is busted, caught for covering sex abuse by priests upon minors. He also boasted that it was this inner circle of liberal modernists, the St. Gallen Mafia, that promoted and elected Pope Francis in 2013. Pope Benedict was getting old as the Pope Emeritus, and sadly on December 31st, he passed away into his eternal reward. May he rest in peace. Just today, Archbishop Gary Gansfein has released his new tell-all book, that will be made to the public and allegedly brought into English soon, hopefully not soon enough. We also saw this week that Pope Ben the Sixteenth, in a release letter, said, "As one sees the power of Antichrist spreading, one can only pray that the Lord will give us mighty shepherds to defend His Church against the power of evil in this hour." If you want to know more about that, check out my video yesterday here on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. We looked in to Pope Benedict's belief that we are entering into the era of the emerging Antichrist. Today's news um, was released by an Italian journalist, Sandro Magister, and he has reported that Cardinal Pell not only died this week, not only had an article that was attacking Pope Francis's pontificate and the Synod on Synodality, but also Cardinal Pell has now been revealed as the author of the memo of Deimos. I covered it when it first came out, and I said I didn't know who Deimos was. Now we know for sure who Deimos is. Deimos, D-E-M-O-S, is Greek for people. And this document, I'll read you some portions of it, criticizes the pontificate of Pope Francis, talks about how the legacy of John Paul II is being wasted, and then gives recommendations for choosing and electing a new Pope. And I want to go through some of that document briefly today. You can find it translated into English over at Espresso, which is Sandro Magister's blog. And that's where I'll be reading from right now. It states, opening up, the successor of St. Peter is the rock on which the Catholic Church is built, a major source and cause of worldwide unity. So, the problem is not the papacy. The problem has always been those who occupy it. Previously, Deimos, who we now know as Cardinal Pell, says, Roma locuta causa finita est. Rome has spoken. The cause, the case is finished. The case is closed. But he says now it's Roma loquitor, confusio agitor. Rome, having spoken, confusion augments, grows, multiplies. And then he lists in bullet points, this is Cardinal Pell. We didn't know it was Cardinal Pell at the time publicly, now we know. The German Synod, he says, speaks on homosexuality, women priests, communion for the divorced. The papacy is silent. Cardinal Horek rejects the Christian teaching on sexuality. The papacy is silent. The silence is emphasized when contrasted with the active persecution of the traditionalists and the contemplative convents. He's saying, look, the Pope promotes those who are contrary to the Catholic faith. But when it comes to the persecution of traditionalists or defending traditional marriage, Francis is silent. 
He says, the Christocentricity of teaching is being weakened. Christ is being moved from the center. And then he lists more bullet points. Pachamama is idolatrous. Contemplative nuns are being persecuted. The Christocentric legacy of John Paul II and faith and morals is under systematic attack. Many of the staff of the Roman Institute for the Family have been dismissed. Students have left. The Academy for Life is gravely damaged. Some members recently supported assisted suicide, which is murder. The Pontifical Academies have members and visiting speakers who support abortion. Then Cardinal Pell goes on with more bullet points. It's just a rapid fire of accusations. The Pope has changed the law four times during the trial to help with prosecution with regard to the Vatican trial of 10 accused of financial malpractice. Cardinal Betchew has not been treated justly because he was removed from his position and stripped of his cardinalatial dignities without any trial. As the Pope is the head of the Vatican State and the source of all legal authority, he has used his power to intervene in legal procedures. The Pope sometimes, often by means of papal decrees, motu proprio, which eliminate the right of appeal to those affected. Where have we seen this recently? Father Frank Pavone, who's been laicized without recourse. By the way, I'll be interviewing Father Frank Pavone this coming Monday. That's in three days. Make sure, by the way, you are subscribed right now. Click the subscription button, hit the notification. We're going to hear from Father Frank Pavone and get updates on his legal status. You're going to want to see that. Subscribe and be ready. While you're at it, hit the like button. Cardinal Pell, as the mysterious Demos who's now been revealed, says many staffed, often priests, have been summarily dismissed from the Vatican Curia. Phone tapping is regularly practiced. I'm not sure how often is authorized. And he goes on and on. He even gets into details with amounts of money in euro as it relates to the Banco Ambrosiano scandal. It's embarrassing. This is a catalog of corruption, of deceit. And he lays it all at the feet of Pope Francis. It's sad that Cardinal Pell died. And when you realize how critical Cardinal Pell was of Pope Francis and that Pope that Cardinal Pell died so suddenly, it does make me suspicious. I'm not saying Cardinal Pell was murdered, but I think we need to consider it. I think we need to open up the questions that it just so happens the most critical Cardinal of the Pope, while in town in Rome for Pope Benedict's funeral, died after surgery. It's suspicious. It's suspect. His recommendations for the next pope is basically a return to tradition, a return to unity, a move away from synodality, and properly practicing hierarchy in the church. May Cardinal Pell rest in peace. I'm devastated. I'm gutted that the man is dead because he had so much to say. And it turns out he was a leading voice in criticism of Pope Francis, but we just didn't know it until he died. Pray for the repose of the soul of Cardinal Pell. And let's pray as Pope Benedict asked us to pray for mighty shepherds to defend his church. That's the request of Pope Benedict. We need mighty shepherds because Pope Francis is destroying the vineyard of Jesus Christ. And it has to stop. It has to stop. Thanks for watching the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. Make sure you're praying your rosary. Make sure you're reading your Bible every day. We've got a great plan to read through the whole Bible over at New St. Thomas Institute. Go over to NewStThomas.com. Make sure you're praying your rosary every single day or you're not on the team. And until next time, remember our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless, Godspeed, and pray for shepherds. I'm going to leave the quote up right here. Pope Benedict, as one sees the power of Antichrist spreading, one can only pray that the Lord 
will give us mighty shepherds to defend his church against the power of evil in this hour of need.